Whoa, interrupting his coffee break. I am spectacular, the Silver Stack. I'm here with the coin guy at his shop, Spring Hill, Florida. Guy, how's it going? Everything is doing great. Welcome to America. God bless America. Here we are on a cloudy day in Florida. Cloudy day. You got coins out here. You got, got some right around. here on the top of your table this time because we're after hours. We're going to talk all kinds of stuff related to coins, precious metals. The fun show. The fun show. Everything. Well, hello, everybody. I seek to educate and entertain through my journey of collecting coins and stacking precious metals. I encourage you to subscribe and please stay with me on this journey. I am Spectacular, the Silver Stacular. I it. had a great time with fun. I had the grandkids, my daughter, Nathan, all of us were there, the whole gang, even the wife. And I want to thank those dozens of people because I asked Lily, how many people are going to say hello to Pop Pop? She said 20. Thank you, dozens, at least 50. Maybe it was hundreds. But anyway, about 50, I think, at least. Times it was surrounding me. It was kind of cool. A lot of photographs, a lot of thank you for what I say and my position on things. Thank you all. Uh, shout out to all of you. It was, it was a good fun show. Uh, I had stuff to drop off at, uh, to get certified with NGC. Um, it was a good show. It was well attended. I was there from about 10 until 2 o'clock, and the place was pretty humming. It was humming. Um, I had my grandson with me there, and these fun the little kids. They have a wheel where the little kids can win stuff, and uh, my granddaughter won a silver certificate. Then little guy spun the wheel. He won $25. He was hysterical, jumping up and down. Now, he's seven years old, and they handed him a bag of shredded money. Oh. Well, that didn't go over well with him. Confetti? Yeah. They shredded him. They gave him a $25 bag of shredded money. And a friend of mine had a table right by there. He's just seen little guy. I heard it. He said, what the hell is this? <laughs> she got real money. I get shredded paper? That's, that's my grandson. <laughs> You're lucky that's all he said. That's great. That's a Christian education. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was a good thing, a good visit. I got, you know, I got some answers there, and I had a good time, and it was well attended, as I said. Uh, I brought some stuff around. I had shown you a couple of things that I wanted to get opinions on. When you say opinions, uh, you went to, like, the coin graders? I went to ICG, and I talked to Skip. Okay. Now, I accepted some of what he said. I believe him. This one you saw before. This was a 1799 penny. He said it's a really good copy. Um, I figured 90% it was no good. But this is like an XF with this one right poricity. Here. Yeah. yeah I, I touch this one? Sure. That way I can see it. I mean, it looks better. really good. The numbers are wrong. He sees a lot more of them. He offered to buy it from me because it's really good. It's an older copy, and it's really good. Okay. But the fact that he offered me some money for it tells me something, too. Not that it isn't counterfeit but it's it looked really good in any collection he was willing to buy it even though he's saying it's not real yeah that's that's unusual to me i mean well to me it's education i'll use it for education okay unless somebody comes close to that price because i paid like that much for it uh as i said i suspected it wasn't real i know skip if is it's big, real it's 10 grand skip is big on some coin forums out there so maybe he was trying to use it as well for education of course he would yeah i agree with that that Thank one you. you've seen the key. So what did they say about this one? They said, uh, that one I didn't show. Oh, I okay. knew what that is. Okay, I mean, that's no got a hole. What else uh, did you show? This one, he said, really strong form of machine doubling. Okay. I bow to his knowledge, but that is the best machine doubling I have ever seen. Incredible amount. Well, this is the one that you thought was a discovery coin, right? Yeah. I mean, I saw it too. It's very good doubling. Just very strong. Yeah. You can see it with the naked eye pretty easily. Yep. Hmm. Okay. This one was legitimate, but it didn't pay to send one coin in to be certified. This has got a strong lamination. The whole 30% of the coin is missing on a wheat penny, a 42 wheaty. What if it was a 43 copper wheaty with that? Whoa. Holy cow. I don't imagine that. Would that add to the price or subtract? What do you think? I know it would subtract. Because I saw one of those two 43s, 43 coppers that were graded. I saw them raw about five, six years ago. 
the uh, the one that had no problems went for two hundred eighty thousand. I had them raw in my hand, and it was one with a heavy curd, you know, where they had a lump of metal on the front. That one sold for a hundred thousand less. Oh, it's not chopped liver, but it was a major difference. But it's still of only one of a couple of dozen, so definitely a rare coin. And I picked up something recently. I don't have one. Here's a love token on a penny. When you say recently, was this at the fun show or this? No, I picked that up uh, about a week ago. You know, a bunch of stuff that came in. So you usually see them on wheelies. silver coins, right? Yeah, you very rarely see them on coppers. And on a wheat penny, it's the only wheat penny I got. So and that's got to be toward the end of love tokens. Because by then the women said, hey, I want the diamond ring. Yeah, I, need something. I want the rock. You can give me a penny. Whack. <laughs> <laughs> a penny, is that all I'm worth? You're sleeping in the other room. <laughs> you made something with your hands? That's not worth it to me. Yeah. I need something of, of substance there. That's great. Hey, Guy, when you were getting bombarded by uh, your fans at the show, did any of them ask you about our silver rounds? At that time, no, but I've had phone calls inquiries since. Okay. And we've got to get back on that. They're bombarding me with those, so we we'll probably have to do another round just to yeah, pick get them up out another the fans hundred, hands. But we'll, we'll get back to you. Okay. I did have one fan, and my wife was next to me, who came up and said, Tom, Tom, is that you? <laughs> and I said, I'm under contract. I can't talk about that. I think she got a kick out of that. I said, see, there's a clear, lot of resemblance here. Yeah. And since him and his gang are on strike, and I'm available for those, you know, premieres and stuff, if you need me, I'm here. That's great. Uh, but that was funny. <laughs> that was cool. That is cool. What is this book you have down here, guys? I had a client of mine send me this, and I bought other coins from him. That's his Dansko, he, right? Yeah, this is the Dan. This book is like $30 empty. I mean, this is a nice book. This is made for the two and a half by two and a half holders. And this is basically early England, the 16th century, 17th, 18th. I mean, it starts in 1672. And it's examples of a lot of their coppers. Uh, for those who don't know, farthings are one quarter pennies. This is a quarter of a penny. They even made... A third of a farthing, which would be like a twelfth of a penny. Wow. I don't have any of them right now, but I've had them in the past. But this takes you right from 1670 through Charles II. Uh, this would have been before Charles I. No, this would have been Charles II also. And then you go right through. This is the king who took over after he executed... Uh, who did he execute? Cromwell, Oliver Cromwell, who executed his father, so took cool. his head, so okay. turn around is fair. Yeah. The English Civil War. Uh, but he rules for about 30 years, Cromwell. These are um, very interesting. Yeah, a lot of them are lower grade. They run anywhere from good right through very fine. Uh, this is, these, I think this is a better date. There's a few better ones, but they run anywhere from $5 to $60. Uh, and they run right through the different kings. William the Third, yet William and Mary, uh, George the First, one of the first of the Hanover kings who were part German. Um, this is why coin collecting is great because you get something like this. And this is just so much history. Yeah. As it's, you're flipping the pages, you're going, you can explain what, you know, like where we are in the timeline. Yep. And you can see from the years, George the Second. Then you had George the Third. You know who he was. The nursery rhyme Humpty Dumpty was about him. Oh, after really? we yeah, after we beat the British out of England, it's Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall because we won the revolution. And all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put him back together again. We pushed the British out. But that's the nursery rhyme comes from the defeat of the British during the revolution. Never knew that guy. Oh, that's true. That's awesome. That's true. I remember when I was single. No, that was a different story. Uh, <laughs> Careful with some of those stories. Yeah. <laughs> Here you got a pretty famous one. This is a two pence. I've had these before. This is probably the most valuable coin in here. That's pretty cool. So that's a big boy. That's two cents. Keep your two cents to yourself. Oh, you can yeah. knock somebody out with oh, that two heavy cents. Guy. It's heavy. Jeez. And huh? it was based on the intrinsic value or the melt value. 
But that's, you know, this is a one penny. You got the whole set, really. Well, you have a few of these in your pants, and your pants start turning into socks. I'm telling you. Man, that's yeah, rough. You haven't having five of those bouncing around in your pocket? No. What do these things weigh? I mean, this is going to have... You try to run with those? 38 either. penny weights, just under two ounces. Just sure. under two ounces of copper. This is just your two cent piece. Keep your two cents to yourself. Yeah, if you had like five of those in your pants, I mean, you need like a, yeah. a man's version of a sports bra. You know Six what I mean? Six of them, down you there. got almost a pound because those <laughs> Troy ounces. But it goes right through George the Third. Um, this is cool. It goes right through George the Third. Then you have the, what they call the Condor coins, which are comparable. I was talking to him about these, and I said, so what are those, are those comparable to Civil War tokens? Because Civil War tokens were made because there was a shortage of change and money in the northern states especially. And the Civil War tokens were made, most of them in 1863, right to 1865. And in England, in the, 17, in the late 1700s, at the time, you know, well, the revolution was basically over by then, but in the early, late 1700s, these are more like store tokens, but they were made to compensate for for change. And most of these are half cent size. Okay, can I take this one out right here? I think there's a ship on that one. A lot of them have ships. I'm partial I've to got the ship. another half a dozen I already had that are higher grades. Yeah, this is your ship. Oh man, I just eagle-eyed that thing right away. Now this is for sale, but I want to, I would like to sell it as a whole, or if somebody wants the condo coin separate from this, I can do that. So the whole thing is for sale? Yes. Okay. But it's nicely presented, and like I said, this is, and you got room to add. I mean, there's a few more pages back here. I was going to stick mine that I have in here, but I'll just show you those separate. I've got a lot of the early British. Uh, if you are a fan of England or Canada, here. Let me so I thought you. this was like your personal thing you brought in. No, now. this was, I bought this yesterday, last night. I got to send out a check for it uh, down here. I like how you have all the coins out right for all the viewers today. This yeah, because it's a day off, so we can do this. Um, here you go. Here's more of them. These are higher grades, higher prices, but I can always work it out. But these are these are comparable to those. A token. Mm-hmm. Very cool stuff, man. Yeah. And then I've got what used to be what they called jettons. A jetton? Here's a bunch of jettons. Now back from the late, say from the 1600s up, um, there were gentlemen clubs, which means no women allowed, but these were gentlemen clubs and except they gambled. The, except for the women that worked there? Yeah, you might say that, <laughs> the hostesses. Uh, these were gentlemen clubs and they gambled. Gambling was bigger then. You've heard stories. They changed some British laws where a lord couldn't gamble away his whole estate. You just couldn't take, because people who are addicted to gambling will go crazy with it. But they didn't use real money because that was vulgar. They used what they called jettons, which I guess was a forerunner of uh, tokens or chips like we use in casinos now. Ah. And this would be the same type. I've got a few more inside that I have to put up. A lot of them look like English sovereigns or half sovereigns because they played with counterfeit-looking gold coins because these guys weren't paying for pennies and two-cent pieces. I mean, two pences. They were, I guess, gambling silver. But they used jettons to gamble with. And then you cashed out. Or you just give them a, a sheep, a, you know, here's a 200 acres of the estate. Little by little, you've heard the story where they gambled your inheritance away. Well, this is the forerunner of some of that. That's fantastic. That's the history of jettons. I love this one right here. Put that like on a little necklace or something? 1755, yeah. Wow. This is a bunch of Canadian tokens, I believe. Yeah, this is a bunch of Canada. I have a lot of foreign is what I wanted to show you. Um, oh, these are so cool, too. See, here I've got... Where have you been hiding all this stuff from, man? It's been in the case, but you don't see it. Yeah. See, here's England. Oh, I'm sorry, I got mesmerized over here. I'm coming over. This is Canada. I can't... Yeah, this is British India. British England. Here's England. Canada. Now, these are certified. I have room. Um, and these are the, the cool stuff. 
get to Sweden, Denmark. Some really early pieces here. Got this, 1773 Swiss Cantons, which is basically city-states in Switzerland. A Swiss tampon, like, you said? Yeah, Cantons. Oh, Canton, okay. Uh, which is just like Germany had a lot of city-states. At one time, if you have a look in the 1600s books, the half the, half the book of 1600s is German city-states. Bulgaria, Prussia, Hessians, and many, uh, 180 others. I like that you brought all this stuff out. And you this know, is all certified stuff. Guy, <clears throat> I got a comment the other day that people said that I should uh, stop calling you Guy so much in the video. They said it's disrespectful. My name is Guy. Your name is Guy. <laughs> yeah, Guy's Guy. I don't think they know that your name is actually Guy. My name is Guy. <laughs> and I've had people ask me, then there are those with Italian heritage, you know, Guy is short for Gaetano. My grandfather was a butcher in the Lower East Side, and they called him Tom. That's short for Gaetano. He Americanized it, but my father brought it back when he named me Guy, his father's real name. So you didn't name, call me Gaetano, but your Guy. Your name is Guy. And I, uh, I'm proud of that name. That's a cool <laughs> name. If you look it up, it means earth. It means leader, strong, all these things I am and more. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But yeah, and that's, that's why we name. have little Guy, <laughs> my grandson named Guy. Uh-oh. I'm surprised that's still here. What is that? That's one of the Philippines, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is just a sample of what he had. And just once again, here, here's Great Britain. Here's more Great Britain. Pennies, silver, pences, all kinds of Great Britain. Uh, many thousand dollars worth. And here we got Canada. All of this is trumpets. What they call their, uh, their half, uh, what they call scales, I mean. Their half dimes. Uh -huh. Right here. I got probably 200. You got uh, the rare coins here, guy. I got a lot of them. These are all silver coins. I mean, that's your game, right? You're more of a rare coin dealer. I am dealer. a rare coin dealer. I do come into bullion. Right now I've got plenty of 90% and quite a few ounces of gold. But we really deal in rare coins. And that's what I wanted to show. Um, Come back this way. Like, if you call and you need, you know, there are others out there who really highlight their silver holdings. Back. But if you need a 1910 penny, you're going to find it on the tray over there. Or... That's your game. The rare you know, coin dealer. You're going to find your early pennies here. And I probably have 15 more in lower grades at 10 S's, 11, 12, all the way up. 11's, I only have a handful. I have no 09s, no 31s right now. They just go really quick. The same with Indians. Oh, did you get Flying Eagle? This is my higher grade stuff. And I actually have rolls of some of this stuff. I was going, me and my helper were going through some of the rolls the other day, and we put 40 pieces of 1863, uh, 1879. I think I have a 50 piece tube. I mean, some of the slightly better dates I have rolls up so if you're putting books together or you're speculating whatever I have uh, I have inventory if you need it same with this stuff not so much the key dates but we have plenty of rolls of 09 SV of 09 VDBs 09s 12 13 I have a whole ton of that stuff you could make a couple albums here huh we could make <laughs> quite a few albums and here's your semi keys I actually got to get with you. I have an album of uh, old Weed Sense. I got I got a couple in there that I'm not going to be able to get on my own, I don't think. Okay. I'm going to need some help, guy. Let me know what you need. I think I have a couple of 22 planes over there. Yeah, you know what I need. Uh, but his, his VDBs, 10S, 11S, 22s, 24Ds, I mean, multiples. And you get some of the dates. Yeah, these are 10Ss. I just had so many in 2 by 2s I'm just putting them in a loose. You ever get the person that comes in with like, let's say a 22D and they're like, oh, this is, you know, a rare one right here. Look at this. Yeah. And then you go like, listen, brother, like, look at this. Like, look what how many you I have. have is, and I don't mind that, but they look on eBay and they'll tell you, well, you know, I saw one of these for $11,000. Yeah, but you saw a Mac proof or the best in the world. That's not your coin, you know, and that one was a 22 plane. You see this little D underneath? That counts. The 22 plane in red is big money. Yours, I'm sorry, it's got a few bucks, but not as much as you think. Now these are all uh, these are all Lincoln pennies too. 
these are not the semi keys, but you're going to have 13 D's, 15's, you know, extra fine, 16 extra fine, 16 D's, everything. This is all, this is all Lincoln pennies. May I just grab one out of random? I see you right on the edge right here. The one with the red top. What is That's that one right mean, there? Probably means it's a little bit better coin. Let's see. This is a 27 in an AU. Right there in an AU, huh? Not a big deal, but some people put a high grade set together and they need a nicer coin. That'd be so cool to get a nice, and decent what, grade set. What people don't realize, you get like the 15D, you get the 15 plane or the 15D in a high grade and you're looking for, you're looking at a coin that, that jumps in price. What are we talking, how, how does the, the jump kind of go? Well, the jump kind of goes from seven or eight dollars to let's see, let me get you one to show you seven or eight to twenty five bucks, twenty nine dollars. So it starts moving up. Might only be a fifty. Well, fifteen D is a dollar coin in good, but it gets the extra fine. It starts adding up, and I probably have a higher grade one out there. But I have multiples. I probably have 10, 15 Ds in here. But this is my inventory. And your bullion dealers don't have this kind of stuff. I do. Uh, and I have the same thing. Here's Indian head pennies. No wonder I can't find any more tackle boxes at Walmart. Yeah. Huh? My coin dealer And just as an extension of that, <laughs> as I was saying with the other pennies. Just disappears into the darkness. The coin darkness. You don't know what he's doing back there. He could be minting his own coins for all we know. The coin guy, the international man of mystery. There he is. His rolls. Rolls of all kinds of things. VDBs. V VDBs. 09 planes. 12. 11 D. 12s. 13s. 15s. 15 Ds. Now these are really run probably from good to fine plus, maybe even a VF here and there. Uh, 14, 16 S's, and it goes on. I got another box in the back. And then from there, it goes into the 40s. Holy smokes. But this is from, this is where I sit and I go through the coins and I put them, when I get a lot of semi-key dates and I start sorting them out. And then when I fill the to tubes, they go to this. It's a process. You know, it's like making bread. You gotta fold it a few times, and you got it takes a, it's a it's a process. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Yeah. The and, the life of a coin dealer, huh? The stuff that people really don't But consider. you got to be you got to be willing, you know, I remember as a kid sitting on my bed in my late teens just sorting pennies on a quiet Sunday. You know, it's just just what you do, you know. Um, shout out to Jerry. Thank you. New Zealander who came to visit me. Uh, knows I like owls. That's an Australian, that's a, that's an owl from New Zealand. Thank you, Jerry. You just sent this to you? That's he gave it nice. to me. He came in the store. Oh. He spent his time at Disney, and I don't know how he had any money left, but it sounds like he was at Disney for quite a while, and then I met him at Fun. That's cool. Yeah. He wasn't that super tall dude, was he? Yeah. Oh, okay. You saw him. So He's I like met him too. six foot six. Yeah, big guy. Big guy. Yeah. Like a giant Viking. Super nice guy. Well, you know, he was one of the guys that actually asked about the silver round that we made. Okay. So he was like... He, he asked he, me in the store. You're right. Yeah, he said, do we have any more of those? I'm like, man, we don't. And he so did I, ask I me bad. here. I, don't, I didn't have it. Uh, but my grandson was with me, Jack. And he was, Jack was looking up to him. And Jack's about <laughs> five foot three, four. I said, Jack, when he was 12, he was your height. <laughs> so just hang in there. It's you still, got another foot to go. It's still coming. <laughs> Yeah. He liked that idea. Yeah, he had a handshake like a like a rock. Yeah, he was a big guy. Big dude. Big guy. What is this? What is this lizard here you have, guy? I'm looking at this lizard. Oh, this something I picked up out of the collection. It's not a silver lizard. This used it? to be. What's that fun? Used to be a pendant. It's got marcasite in it. That's a little shiny polished metal. Look at this. Can one. I grab your lizard, guy? Go ahead. <laughs> I'm sorry. That sounded bad. All right, let's see. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, all kinds of things will come over. You just never know, right? Oh, that's one of my little poker chips I gifted you. Don't lose yep. that now. That's, that's, no, I just show the kid. Like I said, I've been playing poker since I was six, seven years old. 
I learned to play cards on my grandmother's lap, my Aunt Ada. And uh, I remember sitting at the table in the early 60s, and it's probably when I first got to see all those Buffalo nickels, standing quarters, mercury dimes. I mean, they were all over the table. Mostly nobody played with anything. It was penny and nickel, that's all you played with. Uh, but I've seen plenty of it then, and maybe it's what started tweaking my uh, wanting to get into the coin business. Yeah, my but mom I got learned me to play poker at those tables. You know, the Italians, right after the dinner for Thanksgiving, Christmas, and New Year's, you cleared the table and you played until 11 o'clock at night. Yep. Yeah. I remember my mom, man, when she was always like a, a rummy gal, right? We'd always play rummy. And then once she found out that I liked uh, Texas Hold'em poker, she got addicted to it, too. We were playing at the table all the time. See, little guy likes his numbers. And he's, he's seven now. So I've got to work with him. I've got to start playing poker with the grandkids. Teach him the game. The only thing with little guy, he's not a good loser. Got to talk to him about that. He's competitive. That. Yeah, he's liable to throw the cards at you. He doesn't want second place, guy. You know, you give him a bag of $25 and you give him a bunch of shredded money. You're lucky that guy he walked out of there alive. <laughs> <laughs> Little guy wants to fight you. Wow. What the hell? <laughs> that, I, I missed that, but that must have been funny. Yeah, he said, what the hell was this? At the, uh, the fun show, what kind of wow coins did you see? Uh, there was a whole bunch of treasure coins I got to see. A lot of gold. Uh, you know, when you go to fun, it's, I've explained it as a capitalist heaven. Piles of gold, uh, plenty of gold available, uh, whole trayfuls of gold. Uh, this stuff that you look at, there was one guy who had a display case like this, and all he had was eight or ten bills in it. But there was like two million dollars. You know, you don't got to carry much more than that. You don't got to worry about your carry-on because he got the case, you know, to give you with the table. And the bills you had in an envelope in your pocket when you got on a plane. You may not have got out of there on time, but, you know, you got to carry it. But there are cases where you see million-dollar coins. Over the years, I've seen a lot of them. And as I said, the, the place was well attended. Humming sounds, a lot of people. Um... Like I said, it's, it's not a small stuff. show. It's a, it's a large show. And and even the summer fun, there's a lot of people. 500 tables, 400. It was pretty, I would say that it looked as big to me as winter fun. And that's not usual. Usually winter fun is twice the size of summer fun. But it was, to me, it looked to be just as big. Looked it, to be just as big. It was pretty large. And then you had the Mint had a presence there because they were selling the new 2023 uh, Morgan and Peace Dollars. Um, you got some of those, didn't you? Yeah, I picked up, uh, I got talked into buying more. I mean, it was kind of, I'm trying to think what box we stuck in it. Well, one of your, uh, your protege, I think he came in, he says, I'm getting 25 of each, because they upped the uh, household limit to 25 Morgans, 25 piece Yeah, dollars. I couldn't let James out, well, I didn't buy that many. I bought 10 of each. I think it was a good buy, because the very same day, it showed the remind me message on the Mint's website which kind of means like, hey, just in case we didn't sell them all, we can get you a message, but most likely you're going to be out of gas on these. Yeah, they're pretty, I think they sold out is what I heard. Pretty um, cool, man. I see them all over the place in prices, 120, 140. I'm, I told my son, let's wait till Monday and I'll see what we're going to do then. May I see one of the peace dollar boxes? Sure. Somebody uh, showed me this right here. I thought it was kind of interesting. So you see the 2023 peace dollar Philadelphia. I believe on the back of the box it'll say... Uh, 2022 United States Mint, all rights reserved. So I think that they had to maybe like reuse some boxes. A little That's bit. good. <laughs> Instead of spending money. 14 million dollars to redo the box, there was one guy there. I, I like that 25 coin limit per type to family. There was a guy on the other end of the room at the NGC table. He had 200 of them because he had shopping bag and he had a pile. I mean, he just dropped them into a pile. There was a shopping bag full of empty boxes and a pile next to it. He had to have 200 of them. His whole family had to be there. I don't know how they regulated it. My wife waited online for an hour, and then I got, and you were there too. I mean, there were 30 people in front of me. An hour? These people never worked at Starbucks back there. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. But it was ridiculous how long it took to go for that line to move. Well, they went out of time to everybody. When you were in that line, and it was a huge line, um, they were like, okay, 
you come up one at a time, one at now, a time. Now, they didn't ask for my license or anything. I think it was just, you could have probably made that line a few times, but nobody's making that line more than well, once. Well, that's what right? I'm saying, 25 to a frame. That guy had 200. He had to have had, he might have his wife and both his kids there, but they had to come through a couple of times. I don't know how they got it, but he had, he probably had 200. Now, he was sending him to be certified. First day of issue, I'm sure, can get stamped on there. I'm sure NGC will accommodate you for the right money. And if you do a couple of hundred, I'm sure you get a discount, but it's still probably adding $15 a coin to it. I'm not sure what their quantity price is, but we'll wait and see how that goes. But that was an interesting, uh, an interesting uh, thing on the side there. I think they stopped the first day of issue. I think that now it's like a first strike or something like that, which if it sells out on the first day or close to there, I mean, every single coin is like a first strike, right? Yeah, well, I consider those first strikes. I just didn't wait online again. Yeah. You know, I'd seen NGC, and I gave them enough of my money to get a bunch of gold certified, <laughs> and I wasn't going to do that. Um, I know and I hear that UPS is possibly going on strike. And why does that matter? It matters because we deal with UPS. Businesses deal with UPS. I have different thoughts, and maybe I'll change my mind about it. Um, my brother, the one who was running for governor of Pennsylvania, and you didn't take him, what a mistake you guys made. Uh, I called him last night, and we were talking. Now, my brother was worked for UPS for 35 years. He started as a tracer, worked his way all the way up. He ran Pennsylvania for 20 years. He was a point man for UPS when they opened up Europe. They sent him to Europe. He set up U UPS in both Italy and Germany, and they wanted him to run it from England, and he had to step back. But he knows his stuff. And I said, so what are your thoughts about this whole thing? I like the new CEO. She's made me money because they doubled, they went up, what, 50% their dividend. He says, the problem is with UPS, all the upper people made a lot of money. And I don't know of any driver, and he said the same, their drivers get paid well, they have great benefits. But you're up against the AF of LCIO. And this union doesn't care what you're going to get. They want to strike. And if they want to strike, they will spite their people to strike. That's who they are. Just remember, I was hoping that they're going to come to an agreement only because it's good for business. But if not, like he said, UPS moves a good part of this country's commerce. You look at FedEx. You look at Amazon. They are non-union. Did you hear that? For those people who won't cross the picket line? Non-union. UPS is union. Their people get taken care of. I've never seen a person from UPS who was complaining about what he made. They could pay good money. Not saying they shouldn't get a piece of the action, but I know they have stock options. Hopefully they get together. Why does that matter? Because we send stuff by UPS. Uh, and the rates are going to go up. And if my rates go up, and I, and I own a few thousand shares of UPS, don't get me wrong. It's one of the best run companies in the world. And of course, my brother worked for them. I learned about, about that. And I've owned UPS since the late 90s. It's one stock, come hella high water, I've always kept. And I get a good dividend on it. And like I said, I own a few thousand shares. But they are one of the best run companies in the world. Third biggest Air Force in the world. Um, they are matistic. Mater you know, they're really on the money with it. I know how my brother was. Um, you know, you've got to do the work and you and you get paid. Uh, so I, it, it would have effect on this country, you believe? He thinks it'll, he, he believes that if it's extended, it could add, it could add to a, to a recession. He said 10% possibility that it'll add to a recession. That's, and he's a statistics number, my brother. And he says it will affect the output. Now, they may even hold back the rate increase if UPS goes. Maybe this is orchestrated. You know, I saw where the AFL-CIO is endorsing Mr. Magoo. Shame on you people. But that's another story. Um, you know, as I said, I think that you can sit to the table. There's enough money to go around. The U.S. Postal Service, I use them a lot. I mean, we send out 450 packages. We send out a lot of stuff, but our feelings are more if it absolute, absolutely positively has to get there and it's got a high value. I use UPS ground with a signature.
Do you think that if um, <coughs> this happens, right, let's say a strike does go through and they're not working, right? Trucks are shut off, nobody's moving packages. Um, and then um, FedEx can't pick up that they have some kind of contract uh -huh. where they're not allowed to take on new people. This is what John told me. So, so then USPS is going to try to pick up the load. They're not going to be able to do it no. um, entirely either. I, I'm sorry. You know, they do a job. I better not say too much. <laughs> uh, they do a job. They lose how much? A billion and a half a month and they have a monopoly. You know, they got rid of affirmative action with uh with the colleges it's not fair i don't know how they hire their people but ups's people will work circles around circles around my brother told me a statistic years ago 10 cents on every stamp is used to to help their postal service for packages because they can't do it like ups they have to charge an extra 10 cents on every stamp to cover what it takes to get packages delivered by the U.S. Post Office. Wow. I mean, you know, you, you look, as I said, you have a monopoly and you're losing money left and right. Time to streamline. So something like that, if that does go down, um, you think that could have any kind of effect, either positive or negative, on precious metals? On precious metals? Only the delivery of merchandise? Uh, you know, it's that kind of thing. I ran into, you know, thank you to everybody who bought all our silver dollars last, uh, two weeks ago, a week ago. Um, we broke the machine. Uh, PayPal noticed me that they had to freeze my account because I sold so much stuff. Isn't that a terrible problem? You just, I said, up my numbers. I mean, this is Big Brother. Wanted to know copies of all my paperwork, my resale license, all that kind of stuff, which I have, no the problem, but just raise my numbers. I said, just raise my numbers. I mean, you people make money. I had one sale. They got $184. That was the piece they got for using the card. $184. A few of them were $80, $105. Well, it's 3.5% of 2900 Some people spend more than that. Uh, you know what? I've got a few people sending me postal money orders, certified checks. I'll get around you guys. You don't want my money. I'll get around you. <laughs> I, I, I'm looking at the issue about it being Big Brother, where they're watching you so close. I don't like that. And there's a lot of people don't like that. By the way, this God bless DeSantis. I mean, he took away that, you know, July 1st, where you don't have to hold all that 999. More of it's coming in than ever now. I'm getting the one gram gold bars. I'm getting all of that because people don't like having to give a fingerprint for, for a gram of silver, a gram of gold. And I think it's affected the price of gold of silver eagles, and it will increase the price of nine nine nine. So it's been good for you. Storage it's has been better. It certainly hasn't hurt any. I have no. I have only a few ounces of nine nine nine. I have. I have. I've moved a lot of silver in the last week, and I have more. What I did sell because I ran out of the. Uh, in three days, we ran out of the special. I had twenty rolls of this. These are uncirculated twenty twenty threes uncirculated 21s, uh, extra fine Morgans, AUs. I think I have one roll of unks. I had 20 of these. Can we pop this them was out? full. Sure. Seeing is believing, guy. Show me the money. Okay, oh, yeah. Pretty coins, huh? Some now, this ladies. is going to be more money than the other 29, but I sell these rolls for $720. Um, these are peace dollars, 720. And the Morgans, the extra fine Morgans are 770. That includes the credit card fee. Um, a user 820. The Yunk is a thousand bucks. And this is a this is a, not I had one person complain to me, wow, he got burned from some company that sent a roll of unks, and then he gets this roll. And he says, there were two unks in the whole roll. There were VFs. There were VGs, he said. And he said, I called him and he said, well, we only take the orders. We don't, we don't do the coin. Don't you stick between who you are? Pretty, huh? You're blinding me, guy. Things are bright. Yeah, this one's got some, this one's got some proof feel. I thought the same proof thing, like, right? Yeah. yeah. 78 S's. 
This is a better coin. This is probably a $60 coin, $65. I'll leave that one on top because it looks good. <laughs> I only got one roll of unks right now left. But so we have that. I can put your, your information down in, in the description Absolutely. of this video. That's fine. Okay. Absolutely. And your phone number's right there. People want to give you a call. And here's more dollars. During we normal business hours, please. a lot please. of dollars. <laughs> um, I had a lot of kids come over, too, and they, they had parents with them. That's cool. I got a lot of contributions from people. So when we do the Great American Teaching this year... Kids are gonna make out like bandits. In your experience, guy, with some of these um, these coin graders that are not like the PCGS or not the NGC, um, are these pretty accurate on the? Well, like, would you, you call know, that one right there a sixty-four? Yes, that's on the money. That's a this is, and that's beautiful color, beautiful colors. But you know what? Unfortunately, some graders are snobs. You know, you take somebody like one of the other grading services that I use a lot, and if you take one of these to them, they won't break this out. If it's one of their grading services, this, they look their nose down to them. Uh, I find them to be harder graders than others. ICG. I had a PCI coin, okay, that was, and I've told this story before, it was an 1824 bust half. AU50. I looked at that coin, looked at that coin, sent it into NGC. Came back on 61. Wow. On 61. That's a period. I mean, a thousand bucks. Bang. I mean, you know, they. Uh, if you put that right there in an NGC or a PCGS holder, I guarantee the price is going to go up just because it's in that holder. Yep. People are going to have a little bit more like, oh, okay, now they I They were them. conservative in those areas. That's a wonderful Now, there's coin. some coins, there are some grading services. You have those four, you have the top tier, second is ICG and Annex. You have PCGS and NGC. Then you have people like this, who forever have been putting coins out, and everything from these people is a 66. So not all of them are created equal. That's what you're trying nope. to tell me. Yeah. And in that case, no. I had another one. I don't know where it went. I had one that was like a hundred and two thousand dollar coin, but it was only worth ninety bucks. See, I would call that cleaned. Yeah. Well, most of us would, but everything was a sixty-six. And you get where they start showing these things like no luster on online, that. and people are buying the plastic. You still need to know what you're buying. Yeah. There's no way that this is this is a cleaned AU. Maybe even Net XF. I got it down to ninety nine dollars. It's an eighty three S, you know. So it is a. Key. Yeah, I mean this is a. Let's see where it is now. What keys are we looking for with the Morgan Dollar set? Oh, there's quite a few. Some of them you wouldn't realize. The eighty six O, the ninety two S, ninety two S. Here, let me give you right from the book. Ninety two S and very fine. What do they call this? A doctor and lawyer set? Yeah, exactly. In a fine, it's 90 bucks to 92S, okay? In AU50, it's $2,000. In UNC60, $48,000. Oh, man. $48,000. <laughs> In a, a 66, jump. we could buy us a house down the street. Let's see, 92S. Forget about it. 220000 Two hundred twenty thousand, but in AU it's about as you said it's a couple of thousand. Sixty it jumps to forty six thousand hmm. dollars. This is a eighty three S. So basically, one ounce of gold, um, uh, a tube of gold, and then a monster box of gold. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, eighty three S. Okay, I would call this. I mean, this isn't. This isn't. You know. Extra fine, that coin's about $80. AU, it's 225 AU, 50 In a 66, 48000 $48,000. But that right there will fill a hole in your collection. It will fill a hole. It's a nice enough coin. Um, what are we doing now? I'm looking for detail. Oh. Yeah, it's been clean. Too flat on the hair. This is an XF. This is I got ninety. I got ninety nine on that. That's an eighty five dollar coin. Bada bang. 
So you but you got to be hole, careful when yep. you're buying, cool. you know, people like this. They're playing on a NGC and AC. Yeah. Oh, it's the same company. Who knows what they tell these people on the phone? The guy I bought this from, I bought a number of them off of, and I had to school him about that. Uh, he had put $50,000 into a bunch of coins, and he got an inheritance, and he stepped back from another two fifty. So I, he thanked me because I saved him money. And that's just, that was about five, seven years ago I bought that coin. Um, You've got to be careful what you buy. Um, What's the market like? Um, on the gold and silver coming into the shop now? Because you did say that there's a new law I'm in place now. Uh, I, you don't got to hold it's it. It's not so. 10 buyers for every seller anymore. It's about even money. Uh, but they are, I'm selling more silver than gold right now. Um, I do have gold on hand, but I'm not the guy to go to if you want 20 ounces of gold or you're looking for a monster box. You need 590%, I got that, you know. That kind of thing. You need a hundred eagles or a hundred rounds. I don't have the rounds now, but I got the eagles right now. But I'm a rare coin dealer. This is what I do, uh, and we sell a lot of rare coins. Also, we all around. We do it all. I mean, some people look at you and they won't do business with you because of the way you dress, the way you look. We let everybody in. Your money's green. It works. Speaking of letting everybody in, let's ask you this question. At the fun show, they started something a little newer uh, yeah. this time around. Okay, where you had to go to a table. Fill out your name and your address, and then you had to go to the booth. Uh, show your license. And show your license and make yeah. sure that those two matched up. You know, it's like when people asked me last year if I was going to Chicago Summer Fun or Summer Show. And, uh, and I said I wouldn't go there if it was free. I mean, there was, a plen there was police presence everywhere at Fun. There were cops all outside. Um, at the Orlando Fun. At show. the Orlando Fun. Yes. I mean, they parked the car and I walked across. And one of my fans yelled, hey, coin guy, he was sitting on a chair, he saw me. Uh, but there were cops everywhere. Not only that guy, and I don't know if this happened to only me, maybe I parked in the wrong spot, but it was like, a, I don't know, a half a mile to get to the show. It was a long walk. It was, well, Tara found a good spot, you know, block and a half, maybe. <laughs> I don't know, I didn't walk it. If you were <laughs> to steal something at that show, you got to walk through all those cameras to get yeah, out. Exactly. Uh, like I said, the Chicago show, there were six robberies on the floor, and who knows how many old men got jumped leaving. You know Chicago's reputation. Yeah, Can't terrible. blame that on Trump, too. I mean, it's just the way it is. There are certain cities, I'm surprised they have any shelves for anything. You know, I was reading today in uh, the um, Wall Street Journal puts out a magazine that says mansions. And it shows high-end property for sale. They got these two towers on the west side where the train yards used to be. Somewhere around 10th Avenue right up to the parkway. They've got these two towers they put up, 92 stories, 88 stories. They picked the wrong market to start building and putting these things up. The medium price in one of them is something like, I forget how many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, Two million dollars? I mean, the penthouse was 56 million. One tower is 90% full. The other tower is 50% full. <coughs> that tower has 145 apartments. Medium price, five and a half million. Okay? It's only half full. There was a picture there of a woman who was a real estate agent who bought the place. She bought her place in the beginning or five years, six years ago for 4.9 million. She's got it up for sale now for 4.5 million. Of course, her kids grew up. Well, what, did they move out at eight years old? Mm. I mean, six years ago, how old were they? I mean, I don't know how many children you got, but because I got some egg on my face. Uh, you think? Now, you're going to put your place up for $4.5 million. Well, there's 70 other units that are brand new, nobody slept in, and they're competing against you. They got some of the places they're going for 40 and 50% below what they were asking. Wasn't a good market. Yeah. Once again, you're also looking at the neighborhood. Crazy time. I mean, this is, that's those big cities. There was a good security there. There was a lot of nice coins. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> coffee went down the wrong pipe there, guy. Water. <laughs> oh, water. This is water. <laughs> and look, my owl mug. People are going to think you have COVID now or something. No, no. I'm, there goes the comments. They're going crazy the, the kids are talking me into doing the fun show maybe next year. You should. Uh, I might do the winter. <laughs> I know that you were at this fun show for longer than usual. 
as of about late. an extra hour yeah only because and i didn't even eat lunch there i got in their hotel room where was the lunch they moved it yeah it was outside because it's funny because the girl oh we're sold out so we had to put the food outside you sold out because you got a smaller room not an idiot. I mean, he's, you know, if you try to put a gallon of water in a half-gallon bucket, oh, it overflowed. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, you put the food outside. That's right. okay. But I think it was about as busy, it looked like, as many tables, I think, as the winter fun. Um, it had a good turnout. Things were humming. Uh, I saw spaces on different people where, you know, obviously they sold some coins. Uh, there was piles of gold there. Um, one of the first things that happened to me is I go to a table and I overheard some people behind me talking about Miles Standish. Did you hear that he passed? No. Yeah, uh, he passed out at a, a country club in Texas uh, just a few days back, actually. Wow, I know I know of him. Yeah. A friend of mine's a friend of his. He's a big name in the uh, in the hobby, for sure. Yes, absolutely, isn't he? He's a big deal with uh, NGC. NGC. Everything, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. Very sad. Uh, wow. He was 58 years old. So wow. Yeah. That was yesterday. Well, no, I haven't gotten it yet. For you? <laughs> I haven't gotten it yet. But, uh, yeah, I'll be, what? I'll be 69 next month. Eh, Still young, man. Just another year. It ain't the years, it's the miles. Well, listen, That's you, what I you promised me at least 100 videos, so yeah. we got a few more to go. Yeah, maybe so 30, 35. You got some time left, Let's right? see if we can get to 10 million views. That'd be pretty cool. Are we there yet? We got to be there already. Yeah, we're 4.3. Not that I count. Uh, I think around <laughs> 4.3. Uh, we'll see. Like I said, anytime Taylor needs somebody to step in, I could do the stage. <laughs> anyway. What, what's the, what do you have over here? You had uh, something you wanted to mention? Uh, I just uncovered some of the stuff. You got, I got this. Anybody needs proof sets. Wholesale prices. This is just the 99s. We have 2000s. We have a dozen 12s. I think we got a, tw a dozen 2012 silver sets. I mean, we've got plenty. Now, the 2012 silver went from what, 190 last year to 100 now. I think I'm selling these to break even. Can we pop open a set? Seeing is believing, guy. These sets used to be, I remember when these sets were $32. I want some proof that says the coins say on their 1999. Because tonight we're going to party like it. Oh, yeah. What a great collector's piece. What a great gift. No dollar in the 99 check. Pretty though. Super. But I have many of them. If you got an antique mall or you got a whole bunch of kids, you want to give them one of everything, call me. We can easily do 10% back or more, depending on what you want. And uh, as I said, I've got Taradell's account. I don't know what I got, 40 of these? Um, we probably got just as many, 2,000, 2,001, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way up. You know, even like if you need 22 proof sets, we have. Uh, we have 22 silver proof sets, 2012 proof set. We got plenty of silver proof sets. And as I said, we've broken out the, uh, I broke out the quarters and stuff of the silver proofs. 25 times face, a roll of, uh, I dropped the price some because margins went down a little bit. But 250 a roll. But you're not keeping them from now. You're holding it for the long run. Uh, my own personal, most of my personal silver is in proof silver. Um, you never got to worry about the weight. Silver is $100 an ounce. Whatever the weight is, the weight will be true. Uh, that's how I look at that. You know, I'm looking ahead. You know, I'm looking 30, 40 years down the line like the enemies of this country do. Very smart, guy. Um, There's a reason why you've been around so long. You know why? You're a I'm, smart guy. And I love what I do. It's about the history. This paper. Sorry for calling you guys so much. It's okay. <laughs> That's the name. <laughs> I, was, I was like, come on, man. You got to follow the show a little bit. You got to know that his name actually is Guy. How's the paper market been? Pretty good since I got rid of all of the costume jewelry out of here. I should have did that three years ago. Because I, I need, I've just slowly taken this over. As we move some more gold, I'll move the silver over. And both these cases will be turned over to that. I seen some big paper sellers at uh, the fun show. That's kind of like why I asked. They were moving yeah. some expensive paper there. Guy, I saw some over here. You got these incorrectly. You have twenty five dollars on the Franklin's. Okay. It costs at least that to get it graded. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> Don't I know? You're giving the coin away for free. And if you give them a gold one to be certified, they want thirty five. 
does it cost? How does it cost more money to certify the gold coin than the silver coin? It's thirty-five to do gold, twenty-five to do the other one. Let's go economy. Be, but I don't want to wait eleven weeks to get my coins back. Yeah. I don't know, man. I'm I've been waiting a long time from uh, PCGS to get my coins back. It's pretty much in uh, in a stasis mode right now. Yeah. You can't get that coin certified for that. Not saying. if you want it chipped. Is that a proof? It is a proof. Yeah, that's a proof. Pretty, huh? Oh, yeah. Now, the 61 proofs, they are pretty common as far as yeah. proofs are concerned. Yeah. But it's still a beautiful coin, beautiful example. Pigeon nice. The set makes a nice presentation or gift. Um, you know, I've got sets here of silver quarters for different years. I remember going one time into a pawn shop, and they had an entire five-gallon bucket full of junk silver. You know what was littered out all over the top was 61 Franklin proofs. Yeah. All over the top. You know who got those? Who? This guy. This guy. Good for you. <laughs> Good for you. Like I said, I, I remember the shows 40 years ago when silver was king back in 1980. Dumping proof calves, proof uncirculated walkers. The prices were just phenomenal. You get the devil's money over here, man. Look at all those sixes right there, guy. Yeah. Golly. I sold the one with all the sevens. Come and see. And I sold the one with the six eights. The six eights. Because in the Orient, Hong Kong, China, all Japan, eight is a lucky number in, in the Far East. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I know you mentioned that. Is it kind of like, uh, almost like an infinite symbol? Is that why they use it, or is it something Probably else? Probably because it's the yin and yang symbol. Oh, yeah. And that's how they look at it upside down. Oh, um, gotcha. But as I said, we'll see... Uh, We'll see what happens, and we'll see what we talk about next. So, okay, uh, there will be a next. So, always. Everybody should stay tuned. Let's see what happens in the world. God bless America. Hang in there. And uh, what's the next holiday? Oh, the kids go back to school in about three weeks. Oh, thank goodness. The little darlings. Thank goodness. You know, they complain about how much the children have lost so much education. I got a remedy to that. Ten weeks off for summer? Go look at the A, go look in China, go look in Japan. Keep men. They go to school all year. Yeah. They get like a two week vacation, that's it. They, and when your children are three years behind, or you get places like Baltimore, those inner cities, where you got nobody who can pass the competency, you can't add, you can't do math. The teacher's gotta teach them, and no, you don't get off 10 weeks, sorry. I feel bad for the Southern teachers. The Northern teachers, they're teaching kindergarten for $140,000. They're teaching second grade after three, five years, $150,000. They're getting paid good money. I'm sorry. It is what it is. You need to put in more hours with the little darlings. And this 10 weeks off is killing us. The rest of the world is going to eat our lunch because they go to school year round. That's a fact. I think it's sad when you get these people come in and they can't add and they can't read and you what? You're in ninth grade? Oh, but you get a free scholarship to Harvard. Let their endowment pay for it. Fifty billion dollars in the Harvard endowment. That's mm. how much money they got in the bank. They can send everybody to school for free at Harvard with their interest. That's Two percent is a billion bucks. Speaking of uh, schooling for free, what do you think about this? Uh, you know, Biden's tried it now for a little while, and I think he's trying a new plan to cover people's student loans. Do you think that that's a good idea for the economy? I think <laughs> I want to know if Tlaib and people like that who, and I don't mean because she's Muslim, because everybody gets on their high horse about that. Uh, I know she has like 100,000 in student loans and she gets rental properties income from, I've read. Has she paid back her student loan? Has she even attempted to pay back a student loan? She's waiting for a free handout. What about all those people who went to trade schools and learned to cook or learned to be carpenters? They don't get their money back? That's a good point. I mean, all those people, a lot of people went on scholarships and they got to pay something of it. Or they went on for secondary degrees. You, you took a loan so you could get your doctorate or your master's degree. You don't have the money to pay back your 10000 This is all a ploy to buy votes. Who are we kidding? All about buying votes. 100%. It, it is. Everybody sees it except for the blind. You know, as I said before, it's, you know, it just aggravates me. And it, I'm not alone. 
No. A lot of people are very upset of what's happened to our country. God bless America. Yeah. No other country in the world like it. Amen. It's like I've said, you start with nothing and you can make something of yourself. If you're willing to work. And I don't mean three days a week. No, you got to bust your hump in order to stand I out. I talk to all the tradespeople out there. You can't get kids to work three days. Roofing, doing pools. Three days, they quit. Three days. Well, I see all over the place now in the job market and uh, signs, you know, saying, we'll, you know, we hire, we're hiring right now. And it says, we'll work with your schedule. I'm thinking, like, you got to work with somebody else's schedule. Like, they should be working with the business. I mean. See, I can get away with that when I've got a kid who's a family who's working with me just breaking up packages. I'm trying to teach him with Nathan how to wrap packages or to learn some other skill. But he only gives me a few hours a couple of days a week. And when he goes back to school... The school down here starts in about three weeks. <coughs> when he goes back, I'll give him a day or two. He's going to have pocket money. But the richest 14 year old in ninth grade, I don't know. <laughs> but, you know, have some money in his pocket and maybe he can learn a skill set. And that's a great thing, man. You're going to set that dude up for life. He's going to have a little money in his pocket. He's going to realize the value of money. He's going to be doing things on his own. I mean, that's. I saw a protege of mine who 10, 11 years ago worked with me in the store when he was 13, 14. And he basically worked for a few dollars in food a day. He's a full-time dealer now. I saw him, you know, he got on the bus with me. And he was walking the floor. He bought, you were talking about him. He bought 25 of each of the uh, piece and, uh, and the Morgan dollars. You know what he said? Full-time deal. Well, you're, you're like, you're, like, you're going to get 25 of each? And he goes, yeah, I got nothing better to do. <laughs> and he makes a living. Yeah. And he does what he loves and he's 24 years old. Good for him. And he's been doing it a few years now. Yeah. Good for him. I'm glad I contributed to it. It was his ability and his wherewithal and sticking to it. I don't think he only works three days a week. No, he busts his hump. You, you got to drive around. You got to do what you got to do. I mean, this is Sunday. I'm in here. You know, they go to Blue Laws. Guy, what's, what's the Blue Laws? I don't know. What is it? The Blue Laws, no working on Sundays. Oh, there you go. When I learned to drive back in 1972, uh, I drove in A&S's parking lot. The department store on Sundays because there was no there was nobody there because the department stores were closed. You weren't allowed to be open on Sundays. Those days are long gone. Uh, a few businesses still do something yeah, there. You're yeah. right. They get good chicken sandwiches. Chick Fil A still trying yeah. to do something. I wonder how long that's going to hold up. So far so good. Hey, at the uh, fun show, one more question: um, the younger crowd. Did you see much of that? I saw it there, but they got bags of shredded money. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if they'll come back. Uh, yeah, I did. I saw young people around, and you would have known, we were there the first day. There were people who came on Friday, came Saturday also. Yep. Uh, a lot of kids have summer programs and camp. Uh, I know my son, my child, my grandkids are going to be at the Christian, uh, one of the classes this whole week, so they got to want to, and uh, a lot of them maybe couldn't make it, but they, they get the young in, and they, it's good they have a youth program. Well, I've seen people that were, you know, younger than me. I'm uh, going to be 40 next month. And, uh, man, they were writing some big checks, guy. I mean, yeah. these are some young people getting into numismatics hard. Some people, I get young people who, who have big money, too. It's, I remember a long time, back in 1980, there was a well-heeled couple at a coin show, at the one I used to go to at the 110 market, and they had about an eight-year-old with them. And, you know, you could tell they're well-heeled when the guy is wearing a blue blazer with an open collar, you know, and just the way they looked, and their little kid, and he had a coin that was like $3,000 with him, and he was showing it to a dealer. And I said, that's a very expensive coin. And the mother looked at me and said, he has six of these. <laughs> and that was 40 years ago. Jeez. So, you know, that kid is probably 50 now. Right on. Good for him. Good for him. Yeah, it's just what you put in. You learn. You learn history from it, too. For sure. But anyway... God bless America. Everybody stay cool if you can. God, Take thank care. You so much. See you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye. You know, when I was a kid, we did this every day in school, and I believe we need to bring this back a little bit, and I'm going to start right now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all.